not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we have not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe on the saving of the soul. So, king, what page? Page by page. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition. That will be a subject for another day. Ne? But the Bible speaks about something called perdition. So there are two things involved. Perdition or paradise. So we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. And when you speak of perdition, there is a certain element of perdition. It is the son of perdition. And that son of perdition, Judas. So we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we are of them who believe unto the saving of the soul. Now faith is the substance of things to hope for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. So, tell me, how many times does faith appear in the Old Testament? The word faith. The word faith, in a faith, faith, faith. I know I born a Hebrew, see... The Gospels, aka okay, faith, 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 faith. But in the Old Testament, okay, I'll give a specific because I literally in the King James. <laughs> How many times does faith, this word faith, how many times does it appear? In the Old Testament. Let me give you some homework. So I'm going to check how many times there's faith. Like Yabalech. <laughs> now, Habakkuk chapter 2, we will look at the other week again. He that shall come will come and not tarry. So the writer of Hebrews speaks of that vision as a he. Habakkuk speaks of it as a vision, as an it. So now Habakkuk 2.4, er the just shall live by faith. Okay, one instance so by faith appears in the Old Testament. But Deuteronomy 32, Tatu. So I want us to look at this life faith, you know, no, you want the faith generation. No, you want great exploits. No, you want to faith. I want to talk about faith. You know, we have faith today. Deuteronomy thirty-two, verse twenty. And he said, "I, I will hide my face from them." I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. So, note two instances. Two instances where we see faith in the Old Testament. One is in a positive light. One is in a negative light. Habakkuk, positive light. Uh, Deuteronomy, negative light. So, where... Are we going with all of this? Yeah, guy. These are two poignant instances 
in the Old Testament. Are you hearing that? Hebrews. Every now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, in Hebrews, it appears over thirty times. Literally over thirty times, this word faith aids. I want us to. Before we talk about what is faith, ne? in the context of this epistle, we need to understand what faith is not. Ne? Before we can talk about what is faith, it's important that we clarify what faith is not. Many a times in my generation, people take what faith is not and they say this is faith. Some of those things are not bad things, Margaret, it's not faith. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Hebrews 11, 1. The King James, the authorized, again, faith is the substance. The word substance is the Greek word hypostasis. The uh, foundation, a setting place. Mara, the English word, it's a compound word, two words put together, sub, under, and stands, your stance on something, to stand, substance, to stand under. So faith stands under the assurance of God's word. Now, faith is the substance, hypostasis, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. King James, isn't it? but maybe let's, let's visit a few more translations. The Amplified. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. Being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. This is the Amplified. Another version, the Weymouth, it says, faith is a confident assurance of that for which we hope. A conviction of the reality of things we do not see. More faith. Faith means that we are confident of what we hope for. Convinced of what we do not see. Maraloka baby living, you're convinced of what we do not see. So, faith towards God ne, is the second principle of the doctrine of Christ. Get the second principle of the doctrine of Christ. Hebrews 6 1 again. Now, let us therefore move on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. That is so important. The Bible teaches faith towards God. So, God is the object and His word is the very substance of our faith. It is based on his word. Now we're going to look at a number of things and they're going to help us. Uh, in fact, repentance and faith, they are so linked together. Mark 1.15. And the faith and repentance, they are so linked together because actually faith is the second kingdom word. The first kingdom word is repent. Repent, repent, repent. That is the first word of the kingdom. We repent. Now that's where our salvation begins. Repent. And then faith. Mark 1, 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So, faith and repentance are mutually linked. Literally, belief and faith are literally taken from the same root word. Faith and belief. 
They are literally taken from the same root word. Listen to what it says. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. If you are reading it in Greek, ne? have faith in the gospel. Get the present continuous and believe the gospel. Romans 1.17 Reminded that the other week, the just shall live by faith. What does this mean? The just shall live by faith. What does that really, really mean? Faith is the very foundation of Christian life. The very foundation of it. Nothing can be known of God. Nothing can be received of God. Until man first believes in God. In, his, in the existence of God, number one. Number two, until man believes in what God has revealed of himself in his word. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the very foundation of our Christian life is faith. Now this becomes much more important as we begin to realize what the actual message to the Hebrews is. The actual, actual message. Because remember, they had left everything temporal to lay hold of what is eternal. They had laid hold, they have forsaken a natural, physical temple that they can see into a spiritual temple that they cannot see. They have left the natural land of Israel into a spiritual Israel that they cannot see. They have forsaken a natural kingdom that they can see for a spiritual kingdom they have not seen. They have forsaken the natural circumcision of the flesh which they received in their body for a spiritual circumcision of heart and ears which they cannot see. So now there is an emphasis of faith in these guys. But faith is a concept which was not so used in the Old Testament as it is used today. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. You cannot turn to God in faith without having repented for sin, from sin. That is hypocrisy. That's why faith and repentance are, are interconnected. Because what do you have faith in, therefore? In the remission of your sin. Now let's go deeper. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. How can I put it? How can I put it? How can I put it? Okay. Romans 10. Let's go to Romans 10. Listen to, how, to, to what? From verse 11. Eh? But let, let's do verse 17. Let's do 17 for now. Romans 11, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Aha. Uh -huh. So faith comes by the word of God. So what do we learn here? If you have not had God as a faith, because faith comes by hearing. So if you have not had a word from God as a faith, is what you want. Now, think about it. Think about it. Don't worry. We're going to bring it and make it practical. But it comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if there is no word of God, what is it that we have faith in? Now, there is an era of presumption. And I will show you. There is an era of presumption. Our problem is that we are too presumptuous. 
That is the, that, that is our main problem. We're presumptuous. Uh, let's do. Let's do. Numbers. Numbers fourteen. Numbers fourteen from verse forty. And they rose up early in the morning and get up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up un unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. So we'll go back until 45. Ne? But listen, ne? but yeah, we are here. They rose up early in the morning. Early in the morning, they are here. But we'll go back to the house. We'll go like this. And tell me who does this sound like? And they rose up early in the morning and get up in, into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. Hmm. So, who is this? Remember, the numbers has one simple message. Enter the promised land. They sent spies. They came back with an evil report. They believed the evil report. We do not know what. Never mind. You will wander the desert for 40 years. Your children will enter in. In the morning, but so early in the morning, but Ari Moses, we have sinned. Uh, we have sinned. Ari, the Lord said, He had promised. We are now possessing the promises. Next verse. And 245. Next verse. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you. Okay, here's something important. Listen to what Moses says. Ari. You are transgressing the commandment of the Lord. The Lord said no more. We now continue. Ari. You are transgressing the commandment of the Lord. Go not up. The Lord is not with you. Don't go. Don't go. Continue. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. Don't go. That ye be not smitten among your enemies. Okay, let's continue. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword. Because you ye are turned away from the Lord, therefore the Lord will not be with you. Continue. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. That is the problem. They presumed. So we have a lot of presumption. So much presumption. They presumed to go up. So presumably, we do a number of things presuming. This is the Lord's will. Presuming this is what God wants. Now, obviously, God's intention is for Israel to be in the promised land. But we did not do your children because of their disobedience. So now, uh, they are taking something general and about specific about the details. But I know Raya. I know Raya. Continue. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelled in that hill and smote them and discomfited them even unto Homa. So, presumption is often mistaken for faith. So, presumption imitates faith. And it looks like faith, but it is not faith. Listen, there are many things people do, ne? and they end up being successful. Marasi faith, intelligence, resources, many things going to play. And then there are results. And even though there are results, Marasi faith. What do you mean? Lebala Ibrahim, the promised king. Isaac. But now, 
Tell like this guy, oh yeah, I met Isaac. Like he waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. Isaac Afik. What do they do? Sarah has a good idea. And what is this good idea? The idea is tied to the word of God. The word of God is that you shall have many children. You know. So Sarah, and you know what? Let's get a surrogate. Let my servant Hagar take my place. And then we will have the promise. And then Ishmael is born. Ishmael is 13 years older than Isaac. 13 is a number of rebellion in the Bible. Ishmael is 13 years older than Isaac. But the promise king, Isaac. But now what do they do? They get Ishmael. Why am I showing you this example? Ishmael Ashu is the result. We have a tendency of looking Ashi. The result Ashi. You are arguing with results. Oh, what's that Ishmael? Because they're in a discernment. Wana Ashu. She is a child. Maragi Ishmael. So, how do we see Ishmael? Ishmael is Abraham's strength. Abraham's vigor. It's Abraham's strength. Ishmael. But not only that, ne? Sarah had a good idea. So Ishmael is Sarah's idea. Human intellect, Sarah's idea. Human strength, Abraham's vitality. Remember, Abraham was not the one who was barren. It was Sarah. So now, Abraham has the strength. But Sarah, has, her, her womb has been shut by the Lord. So we have human strength. Well, you know what? I can reproduce. I do have a seed in me. And then, here comes Sarah with an idea. Oh now, what if we take this seed that God has given to you and we use this surrogate womb to get a result which is so similar to what God has promised. Maybe that's how we will inherit the promise. This is how 90% of New Testament ministry is done today. We have some good ideas. No, we have good ideas. No, not only do we have good ideas, we have some strength. We have some strength. It might be financial strength. It might be connections. It might be resources. So we take our strength, we take our ideas, we put them together, and we call it faith. Can I say Isaac ki Ishmael? Yes, the result, ne? but it's a fleshy result. And not all we see is a result. A result, Ash. What are you fighting? But this is not what God has promised. There is a generation which is waking up after the midnight hour. What happened in the midnight hour? The Bible says, behold, there were two women. And these two women were asleep. Mara, they are prostitutes. So now, what does this mean? It means that they've got some sexual infidelities. It means they are not loyal to one husband. So we are seeing two types of churches which have not been all together loyal to the purposes of God. But nonetheless, they burst out something. The Bible tells us, in the midnight hour, one of the women was careless. With a child. They were both careless, ne? but the one is more careless. One was careless with a child. And then she slapped over her. And then the child died. This is a picture of how if we do, if we neglect our faith, if we don't take heed to the things we have heard, we can roll over and sleep over them and then they die. 
So now this woman was careless. This woman did not give adequate attention to her faith. And then the child died. In the month, and then she realized my child is dead. You know what she does? In the midnight hour, she swaps the babies. And let me take the living one and give you the dead one. So now this one, her issue was negligence. Carelessness, but this one, her issue is slumber. That even though she did not mishandle her child, but she was not alert to a change which was happening. She was not alert to an exchange. So we are now looking at the church, and then this church we have awoken in the morning, but the baby we are looking at is not our baby. There is someone who has awoken a man. This is not my destiny. This is not where I am supposed to be. No, 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 So what do we learn here? In the morning, she wakes up to find that the baby is dead. But one thing, something in her, in her oh, and I saw how, because yours is living. This one, this thing, this thing here is not yours. This dead baby is not mine. This dead calling, I say, Aka. This dead ministry, I say, Aka. No, no, this dead end, it is not mine. It is not mine. No way. So it will require someone to be bold enough to confront that, you know, this is my child. It will require someone who will be bold enough to confront the enemy, to confront the imposter, that this is my baby. Oh, my bowels yearn for this one. Listen, there were no DNA tests back then, but something in her was yearning for this baby. So th- th- there is the yearner within. There, there are the inner resources uh, being empowered by his spirit in the inner man. Yeah. So there is an inner man. There is an inner person who yearns for the spiritual. A uh, deep calls unto deep. You don't need a DNA test. We just need the call of the deep. The Bible says, and they brought the matter to Solomon. You see, we need to come and contend for our baby and present the matter to the one on the throne and present the matter to the one who is in charge and present the matter to the one with the sword. And then with the sword, we'll be able to determine which one is your baby, which one is not. So now there is the filter of the word of God. There is the filter of the promises of God. So we need to take the word of God and use it to filter between the result and the promise and Solomon arises with the sword and you must be willing for him to cut it you must be willing for him to cut it present it before him Solomon being wise knowing you know what the mother of the child would never consent for this. So, there is a sense of presumption. When we become so presumptuous, you know, assume, because presumption imitates faith. Presumption looks like faith so much that it's easy to miss it. Especially if presumption has got a nice figure. I am telling you, Honor, those, those rebellious hips will lead you to hell. I always advise you guys, ne? even as you're believing in the prophetic, Listen, now I'm going to deny you. If you ever prophesy relationships, 
This is a prophetic directive. No matter how much you're feeling, you don't. Now, I did not just say God cannot speak. I'm saying, well, nah, don't. We don't want to answer questions. Well, nah, don't. Don't worry about the, those two. They're not going to produce Jesus. <laughs> you see, when, when God had to intervene, the salvation of the world was at stake. Are hey, Baba. Joseph, this thing is of the Lord. If God must intervene, he will intervene. Well, nah, shh. Because we have too many prophetic matchmakers. Hey. Hey. Like the prophetic matchmaking. Hey. Hey. No, you desire, man. But you desire. According to whatever you are seeing, with but Listen, I don't play the game. Listen, no matter how much I think about but I get gali give me you. Do you like him? Do you like her? Does your blood boil when you see them? Hey! Hey! That's what I want to know. Hey! Hey! That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. <laughs> because you're talking about Tata Hanover, simply because you will not listen. Harry Lebota. You will not listen. Or oh, act very holy. You hyper spiritualize this thing. Speaking presumption. Mumu di munga sending. Every year the Lord is giving a word, you are my world. Some people in the spirit have got solar systems. So many worlds. <laughs> if you look at your prophetic dating history, oh, not only Pluto, not only Mars, not only Venus. <laughs> Let's not play those games. Because marriage, it's not just a covenant between the two of you. It's a covenant with God as well. He's part of the arrangement. So keep him in the process. Let's move. So, what is presumption? Presumption imitates the faith actions of others. Give presumption. Without a personal living word from the Lord. Without a personal living word from the Lord. Presumption acts like faith, but it is not faith. It acts like faith, but it is not faith. Let's read a few more scriptures. Uh, let's go to Psalms 19. Verse 12. You see, to presume is to take for granted, to take it for granted, to suppose to be true without evidence. That's why we're presumed innocent until proven guilty. To take to be true without evidence. But faith has got evidence. Get the word of God. God said it, that's the evidence. Faith is, faith rests totally on God. Psalms 19, 12 and 13. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now, there are sins of presumption. There are presumptuous sins. We presume. Got to be in something when he's not. When did David? Wow, one of the psalm. When did he commit a presumptuous sin? 
the Bible in the book of Solomon, Samuel, and then Satan, I repeat detail, it just makes an announcement. Satan rose up against Israel and tempted David to number Israel. Now remember, David was fighting all the enemies of Israel and subduing them. And then something happens. Stop and I recount them all. The Bible says God was displeased with David. But if you think about it, what's wrong for me to count? How many members do we have in the church? One, two, three, four, five. And as I'm counting, we remember so one, two, one, two, three, four. But what's wrong with counting members? What's wrong with counting how many are in your army? Was it not God? Like Gideon, who are busy counting? Well, there are still too many. Let's count again. So, but why in this particular instance is counting an error? Remember, David was tasked with destroying all the enemies of Israel. In the days of Samuel, Samuel was the last judge. Samuel uh, as a prophetic sentinel, as a shaman, as a guardman. Samuel standing in that place, he was in between two dispensations. He was the final of the judges and the one who's going to introduce to us the lineage of the kings. But not only that, Samuel is in between two dispensations. A dispensation whereby they have not heard the word of the Lord for so long and then now Samuel is here ordained to be a prophet and then from him is birthed out what shall be called the sons of the prophet. So he's in between two moves. No prophetic, no prophetic intercession, no prophetic movement, nothing. And then here comes Samuel. And after Samuel, prophetic ministry is on a rise and an increase. Before Samuel, no lineage, no, no kingly line, no dynasty. After Samuel, we have kings. Yeah, so we are seeing Samuel that before Samuel, we have a corrupt priesthood. But after Samuel, there is a change. The priesthood is now being changed by the person of, of Samuel. So we see when I'm looking at this person, Samuel, he is a peculiar person. And when I'm looking at Samuel, he is not even in the priesthood. He's a man of Ramoth Gilead. When I'm looking at Samuel, he's a person of Naioth in Rama. Rama means a high place. And then he's Father Elkanah has got two wives, Hannah and Panina. The Bible tells us Panina had many children, but Hannah had none, no children. Hannah means grace, but no, Hannah grace has got no results. Hannah has got no children, but we've got Penina who has many children. And then we see that Elkanah loved Hannah. So He's married to both of them, but the one he loves is Hannah. And the one he loves is barren. The one he loves has produced nothing. Just like Ishmael and Isaac, just like Hagar and Sarah, the one she loves has got no child. Just like Jacob and Leah and, uh, and, 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 and Rachel. He loves Rachel, but Leah is the one giving birth to all the children. So where the heart is, the results are not there. There is a tendency in the prophetic dispensations of God. But now Penina has got many children. And Penina is fronting her children against Hannah. Always going to the house of the Lord, making an offering. Listen, Hanan always got the double portion in the things of the Lord. So in the temple, she's got a double portion. But in the real, there is no children. Hannah, so anointed, so deep, so sanctified. But we've got Hannah, who sometimes does not even go to the temple. And she's flaunting her children. But how many children have you got? With Oga Prophet and Ama Driver. Now I hear all you are saying, but what kind of building do you guys have? So Captain flaunting her children against Rachel. So now we've got Hagar. So now listen, even though Hagar can birth 
out a seed for you, but the child will have an Egyptian heart like their mother. And then we see that Ishmael was persecuting Isaac. Why? Only an Egyptian heart like his mother. Just like his mother started to insult Sarah, even the child will persecute the one of promise. Abraham's choices are now persecuting the promise. Abraham's compromise is now persecuting the promise. Some of you, your compromises are suffocating the promise. Some of you, your compromises are fighting the promise. Isaac is still a baby. Isaac is still winning the milk. But Ishmael is persecuting him. And if you don't get rid of Ishmael, Isaac might die. If you don't let go of that compromise, Isaac must die. Hey, there is somebody who must dump today. There is a phone call you must make. There is a job you must resign from. There are people you must cut off. There is a change which needs to happen. Penina is flaunting her children. If you live here, the numbers are going. And to hell with the numbers and to hell with the results. I know the presumption. We don't want, we don't want something that looks like the promise. Faith. There is secret sins. So, level of David, more than over about sin which is secret. For Psalms, there is secret sins that are more presumption. So, these secret sins are sins of presumption. So, Satan, you know what he does? He rises up against Israel. And all about, you know what? I cannot defeat David. Oh, that's why I went to Samuel. Because in the days of Samuel, there was no need for any army to arise. The Bible says, all the days of Samuel, Israel was at peace and the enemies were subdued. In the old, when Samuel was standing as a prophetic sentinel, all the enemies were hindered, even though there was no army to fight them off. So Samuel was, was fighting on his knees, but David must fight with the sword. So we are seeing that in the days of Samuel, where none of these enemies ever rose against Israel. So it's not the strength of David in battle which subdued the enemies, but it is God using him as a mighty man of war. But nonetheless, in the days of Samuel, there was no army, but yet they were subdued. And so now Satan sees that I cannot defeat these people. Therefore, let me rise up against them and instill some pride in their leader. And when there's pride in the leader, he starts counting. Look at how big my army is. So now he's accounting the victories to his armies. He's counting the victories. So that's what, that's what Satan was doing. He rose up and pride at so. That's why David are secret sins. These are sins behind the pulpit. These are sins no one can see. These are sins you can never get exposed of as honor sister. Never, it's in your heart. No, these are sins not of the bedroom, no, but sins of the heart. No one can expose this sin. Are our secret sins, our presumptuous sins. When I get faith, can't we know we've got a financial injection in secret? Get faith. Get faith. You see, presumption is insolent. Presumption is arrogant. James chapter 2. Number one, faith is not presumption. Number two, faith is not mental. It's not a mental faith. It's not a mental acuity. It's cool. James chapter 2, 17 to 20. Thank you. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Hmm. Faith, if it has no works, is dead being alone. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works. 
and I will show thee my faith by my works. So now, it's what I'm saying. So faith, right? It's not a mental faith. There is a natural faith and there is a spiritual faith. But there's also this mental type of faith. You know faith is that unwavering belief in something. Now, James is one. Hi, man. Verse 17, happy. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. So, a mental faith ne, is knowing the facts. Ne? It, it's a simple mental agreement. It's a mind acknowledging, your mind acknowledging, okay, this is a fact. It's, a, it's just a mental assent. It is head faith, not heart faith. So many in the church have got head faith. Yeah, the Bible says so. I've got faith. The Bible says so. Mark, head faith. It's a simple mental ascent. Mark, this faith never inherits the promises. It's a mental ascent. Yeah, you know, God can do it. Just not through me. Just not now, but he can. It's a mental ascent. Yeah, yeah, 19 and 20. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So, notice, ne, every devils themselves also believe and they tremble. So, when I let a mental faith, knowing the facts, they believe as well as there is God. And this reality makes them tremble. So, without the corresponding actions, without a consequence in lifestyle, if what you believe has got no consequences, it's not real faith. If you believe in God the healer, there will be consequences. It will translate somehow in your lifestyle. Give faith with works, not a mental assent, not a mental agreement. So we need to move from head faith to heart faith. Now we must move from head faith to heart faith. But now, not only that, ne? faith is not, uh, it's not just a natural faith. Arabale, Arabale, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 2. Let's be quick now. Ne? 2 Thessalonians 3, 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked man, for all men have not faith. That's the thing. All men have not faith. So there is a natural faith, a trust in something that all men have. But there is this faith the Bible is referring to that all men do not have. So, natural faith ne, trusts in itself. Trusts in its abilities. Just like Satan was tempting David to get to, to rely on himself, to trust on himself. To trust wholly on things which are seen, to trust wholly on things which are temporary. You know, this wedding ring ne, is not what's keeping my marriage. It's my vows. This is just a symbol. Like a female, and that does not match. I know you've heard some demonic teachings about the ring. This is, this is just a thing. What happens if I lose all my fingers? female. <laughs> What keeps my marriage is my vow. I see ring. I rappel in the ring. Okay, I got the rappel for religion. Let her be. But what keeps the marriage is your vows. I saw the nyadi stake ma ngoto ada. Ah, riko heleng run. Riko heleng. Lere lo wana luko le riko heleng. So now, natural faith, if I can put it like that, the natural faith, it's a reliance on self. It's a reliance on what you can do. It's a reliance on what you can do. You know, sometimes it's very easy. It's very easy. Very easy. 
Very, very, very easy. Paul, lo ena no ne. We can have an audience tomorrow. We can have an audience tomorrow. Et ay vende, u bi tekeke, u bi terrorisang. Ho kala. And I think it's their season. It's their time. Like this. And when I go, yeah, no, look at what God did. I know it's my time. Okay, I go so risang here. Next week, everyone, is it your time? So now we're going to learn something. Where there is faith in natural things. Where no, there's a crowd pool. You put this in the equation and you get this result. You get this result. You put faith in carnal things. Oh no, this is the most beautiful girl I've seen. Get out. After Munyala. Oh, one of the most beautiful girl. Then what? Because it was resting on this is the most beautiful thing I've seen. Tomorrow you see something even more beautiful. What, what then? What then? What then? Just think about it. As you take this home. So, what is faith not? Faith is not presumption. Faith is not a mental faith. Faith is not a natural faith. Ne? And it's not faith towards self. The Bible says faith towards God. John 15, abide in me and I in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me. So, the object and subject of true faith will always be God and never self. It is not a belief in yourself. Listen. Don't believe in you. I know that I'm telling you believe in yourself. Don't believe in you. Don't. Do not believe in yourself. Do not believe in what you can do. That is not, that is believing in self. You see, faith in one's Abilities ne, result in being a Pharisee. It results in hypocrisy. Faith. You know some people have got more self-control than others. Sometimes there's a holiness, no less self-control, my brother. <laughs> okay. How do you express faith? Let's close it here. And how do you express faith? <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. How do we express faith? Oh. <laughs> uh, Matthew 12, 34. Ring, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, we express faith by our confession. We express faith by what? Our confession. What we confess, what we believe. It's one of the ways we express faith. But faith in what? What God? Because faith comes by what? By hearing. I'm still coming. Uh, Matthew 10, 32, Kapila. I get the Bible says, Romans 10, 9. Therefore, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So faith always speaks. It is expressed verbally. So we express our faith again by the confession of the mouth. Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. So faith is expressed by a confession. Eden Waraz. Mara, let me just do this one quickly. Ne? As we were on James. As we were on James. It's a... It's a... Ngarging. It's expressed by a life... A life of hearing 
and heeding and obeying the word received. A life of obedience to the word which has been received. Faith without works is dead. Like we see, we have seen with James. So how do we how do we close this? How do we close it? Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Because some will say, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. But we increase our young in faith. Psalm 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Okay. So you must just settle it in your heart that the word of God is true. So you, you really want to increase in faith. You really want to grow in faith. Settle it in your heart that his word is true. So don't just read with skepticism. Settle it in. Let it be settled. The word of the Lord is proven. It is a shield and a buckler. To all who trust in him, his ways are perfect. So settle it in your heart. That's how you increase. Settle it in your heart. The word of God is true. Settle it. How do you, how do you uh, increase in faith? Number two. How do you increase in faith? Uh, Romans 10, 10, 17. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So put yourself in a place of hearing the word. That means you must, the content you listen to, the podcast, the, 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 you understand? the kind of things you watch, the content you consume. Like, well, or whatever, listen to a podcast and which is speaking of faith, man. The content you are consuming. Literally, the books you read, the content you consume. Okay, let, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Uh, in Grelev, Philippians 4.19. In Grelev, because I just want to answer this question. Okay, my time is officially closing. This is my third closing. And I can't need. In Gilabana, okay now. Because I'm aligning some things. Ne? And uh, I, don't, I just don't want to end with aligning. I want to give you some practical tips. Ne? As we continue with the theology of the subject. So I want you to take this home. Something... You can, you can apply. So how now do I use faith? Number one, locate the promise in God's word, which fits the need. So go to the Bible, find the promise which fits the need. I carry in it are all things which pertain to life and godliness. So find something. Find a verse which fits the need. In locate. Because Bible is ring for all the promise of God in him are what? Yes and amen. Okay, I'm going to say this. Second Corinthians 1.20. Quella Philippians. I agree. Philippians 4.19. For my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Second Corinthians 1.20. For all the promise of God in him are yes and amen. So, locate the promise. Locate the promise. Locate it. And then stand firm on it. But now, if you have not settled in your heart where the word of God is true, then we're going to have a problem. 
Number two. How do I use faith? Number two. Fulfill all the conditions which are attached to that word. Psalm 37, verse 5. It's going to be a verse. Okay, it's going to be a The thing is I'm rushing now. It's going to be a This one is going to be a verse. It's going to be a verse. Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So, fulfill all the conditions which are attached to the promise. Maybe let's do this one as well. Ne? Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And yes. all... Yeah, verse 15. But it shall come to pass... If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, fulfill all the conditions. Remember now, this brings us back to a few weeks back. You have need of what? Patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might obtain the promises. So we have need of patience that after having done the will of God, we can obtain the promises. So fulfill all the conditions. If the word says this, do this, do that, do that. And then wait on God. Lastly, ne? lastly, let's uh, you need with patience to accept the trying of your faith. The testing of your faith. To a time of delay. Because there's a time of delay where God tries and tests our faith. James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith waketh, worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience, let patience have her perfect work. Let patience have its perfect work, that ye may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But verse 3 have. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Okay, so your faith must be tried. So God tries our faith in a time of delay. He tries your faith in a time of delay. And the trying of your faith produces patience. And let that patience have its perfect work in you. Don't worry, faith, patience is still working in you. And then, when that work is done, you are perfected. Romans 5. Let's have a full. Value is Romans 5. 1 to 5. No, 2 to, two to 5. As we are closing. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Okay, tribulation worketh what? Patience. So, be like, be like tribulation. Eh, Paul of Langayon. Ne, eh, James. Are tribulation, eh? Get the trying of your faith. So we glory in our tribulations. 
Because tribulation work at what? Patience. So tribulation work at patience. Mara James are ring the trying of your faith work at patience. So tribulation eh pila pila it has to your patience. But let patience have its perfect work. So now let's see what happens when patience has its perfect work. Continue with Romans the next verse. And patience experience. So patience works in you experience and experience hope and and experience hope mm -hmm. and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our what in our hearts, hearts by the holy ghost which so, is given unto us so we see that faith is a substance of things hoped for the, so faith is connected to hope faith is a substance of things hoped for so faith is connected to hope but when we look at hope in hope maketh not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts so hope is connected to love but faith is connected to hope now the bible says in corinthians now these three things remain faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love we go to john he speaks of love he's the apostle of love riaku james james wagang a faith all we see is faith riaku peter what 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 does peter talk about Peter, you hope, 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 hope. So, Rabana Peter, Rabana hope, Rabana James, Rabana faith, Rabana John, Rabana love. Now, when Jesus would go, he would take three with him every time. Peter, James, and John. Faith, hope, and love. The Bible says, on that mountain of transfiguration, Jesus was transfigured before them. But now, this happened six days. Now, Matthew chapter 17, from verse 1, and after six days, Jesus taketh up with him Peter, James and John into a high mountain apart that word take para lambano para means to bring lambano means to catapult so after six days meaning on the seventh day so there is a rest there is a seventh day there is a Sabbath that God has ordained so now in this ordained day after the sixth day six is the day of man after man has had his day God brings us into rest our works have ceased and then he taketh us up into a high mountain mountain apart so there is an elevation there is an ascension in the book of song of solomon and come away with me my love into that mountain into the height of amana and begin to look with me so there is an upward call to amana there is an upward call to the heights of zion there is an upward call to his perspective there is an upward call to see things as god sees them are away with me my bride my love to the heights of Amana. So God wants us to see things from his perspective. He takes us up with him. Peter, James, and John. Faith, hope, and love. But faith operates in the now. Hebrews 11, now faith is. Because faith always operates in the now. And then hope deals with the future. And hope is the substance of things hoped for. So hope is in the future. Faith is in the now. But now when you look at love, it shed abroad in our hearts. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. And for for God has placed eternity in the heart of men. So the love of God is eternal. It is shed abroad in our hearts. So love is in eternity. Hope is in the future. Faith is in the now. So now about faith, hope and love. The present, the future and the eternal. So when we are looking at faith, faith is in the now. Jesus had three disciples who were always with him. Peter, James and John. The first one to die is James. Faith operates in the now. So James is the first martyr of the gospel. And so now faith in now. He's the first apostle to be martyred. Get faith and then hope and then love. Now I better these three. Faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. So now when Jesus was to be transfigured before them. So there is a transfiguration experience where Jesus wants to show forth his glory. Where Jesus wants to unzip himself of all the limitations his incarnation placed on him. But now, in order for him to unzip himself, he needs to take us to a high mountain apart. And when he takes us up, there are three ingredients necessary. Faith, hope, and love that he can unzip himself. So now Jesus is clothed in humanity, but he wants to unzip himself. And so now there are divine things. The Bible says in Corinthians, 
Corinthians, we've got this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of men. So he knew there are treasures in that earthen vessel, but God wants to dig out that treasure. In order for that to happen, there needs to be an ascending. Now remaineth. So the trying of your faith worketh patience. So God has this tendency ne? where he's trying our faith. Why? He's working patience. But remember, this is the Bible kind of patience. And then this patience ne? is a cheerful endurance. So we need to cheerfully endure. So as they're going through persecution and many of them want to backslide, the writer Ababa cheerfully endure. And then he gives them a legacy, a history of people. Bupi, not, not Bupi. Uh, you, Gideon, you name them. But the word faith, Yabalaiha in the Old Testament. But all these people are nearly faith. If time was allowing me, I will show you, erring the definition, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. The whole chapter, there are two things involved with every person. With every person, something they're hoping for and something they cannot see. Something they're hoping for and something they cannot see. With all of them, they, something they're hoping for, something they've not seen. Something they're hoping for, something they've not seen. What are they hoping for? Get that eat. You're going to have a cook. 